Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Lecture Management Operations, BUSN 6630, Spring 2021. Uh, this evening, uh, in this lecture, I'll just go over the exam study guide, which I posted on Canvas. I'll go over the um, project instructions that are in the syllabus. And so this will probably be a short night. And uh, if anyone uh, has any questions or anything, uh, I will also uh, have this lecture next week as well the next two weeks uh, for any questions that people might have on uh, what's happening and what we're doing. And so first of all, uh, the exam study guide, um, let's bring up a canvas to show you where the information is. Uh, and so if you come down to uh, examine projects here, uh, we have the exam study guide here. I'll cover that. Project instructions really is just a copy from the uh, syllabus. And I go over each one of these. Now, this video will be copied. Uh, I mean, it's being recorded and rendered. And so I'll put it right here and also put it here as well. Put it in both places. So the first half of the video, maybe I'll just combine them and put it one place. But uh, ha the first half of this lecture is going to be the exam. Uh, and then the last half is going to be the project instructions. Okay. Uh, and so um, let's start with the, um, but also... I guess also in the uh, bringing up the syllabus, the um, we don't have anything really due uh, until until this next week. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's bring up the uh, the instructions, exam study guide. <clears throat> So, uh, so the exam summary information, <clears throat> the exam will be online, multiple choice, timed, open book, open notes. Uh, no collaboration, no internet. Each student must take their own exam. And that's strict. Make sure there's no collaboration. Each student does their own exam. The exam will be over the four topics. There will be 16 multiple choice questions, five points per question. And uh, I'll post 90 minutes to take the exam. Uh, no collaboration, no internet, uh, no internet in that, uh, like going out and getting answers or anything. Uh, just use the material, uh, the notes, and the open book, open notes for this course. And no exam is accepted after the end of the course, so make sure you get it done before uh, the end of the course. Okay, the exam information from the syllabus. Uh, online examination designed for evaluation. Now, this design for evaluation, I want to emphasize that, that I try to ask you everything you should know. I don't try to ask you things you don't know or try to figure out. Uh, as a matter of fact, this guide, as you'll see, I'll tell you the types of questions. In some cases, I'll tell you exactly what the question is. I just may change the numbers. So I want everyone to do well to evaluate that you do know the material. Uh, the exam may be taken only once. Exam will be open book and timed uh, and open notes. No collaboration is allowed. Collaboration is cheating. Uh, no <clears throat> communication devices such as phones or laptops are allowed. No sharing of material or equipment is allowed. Uh, and if what I mean by no sharing is you can ask someone for information. <clears throat> uh, you have to use <clears throat> your own information. Uh, <clears throat> if uh, because you're not really supposed to be communicating with anyone during the exam. If academic dishonesty occurs on an exam, the student will receive a zero for the exam. Any incident of academic dishonesty may, may be reported to the Internal Affairs Committee of the Business School of UCD for further action. Answers to the exam will be posted online. Uh, exam grades, however, will be posted on Canvas. Uh, oh, but the course grades Will be, will be reported to the registrar and will not be posted on Canvas. So you will see your exam grades, and I'll open them up. You can see what they are uh, after after the course is over, after the 15th, and I'll leave it open for 15, 16, couple of days. So you can see what your exam questions, uh, exam grades are. Uh, but the course grades, which, which we'll do on the 16th, the day after the course is over, uh, get all the grades, do all the grading or the projects and everything, I submit it to the registrar. And so then they submit it within 24, 48 hours. At least that's what they tell me. Okay. 
Uh, so there's where your grades will come from. Okay, the exam design. So the exam design here, uh, questions will be approximately distributed over four topics. Uh, one through four is a forecasting. Five through eight is linear programming. Nine through 12, aggregate planning. 13 through 16 is inventory, only 16 questions. Actually, a uh, um, question here in the chat, uh, is examination during specific time? Good point. Um, let, me, let me bring up the uh, syllabus again. And notice here, the exam here, is it's due by 11.59 p.m. Saturday, May 15th. I'll be opening it up probably the next day or two, and you can take the exam any time between now and May 15th. So you have plenty of time to take it. You can only take it one time, though. And so there is no set time to take it because it's all online. So you can take it any time you want. But once you take it, you can't take it again. And so I did that. So hopefully people can take it early and then start focus on their project. Or they can do their project, then take it later. It really depends on your, your choice. Okay. Good question. Okay, now the exam study guide. For each question, this guide down below will describe the material and type of question that will be asked. Since the exam is open book and open notes, purposes for this study guide are not only to review the material to be ready for the exam questions, but also to know where to find the material for the answers in your notes. Some questions will be qualitative and some will be quantitative. Therefore, a calculator will be helpful. Also, the wording and values in the actual exam questions can vary from this guide, which is fairly obvious, but I'll state it. So I won't, uh, the numbers will change for sure, uh, but sometimes the wording is a little bit different. I changed the, uh, the subject and predicate around, uh, but basically it's the same material. Okay, let's get into it. Topic one, forecasting. Question, and by the way, I'll tell you exactly what these questions are about. In other words, question one. <clears throat> uh, no, Brittany, I don't use Proctorio anymore. Uh, I, I used to, but I don't do that anymore. Uh, it'll it'll just be open. Uh, there, there, you don't need a webcam. Uh, you just take it online. Uh, but it is timed. It is time for 90 minutes, and so you can't uh, let, leave it open for a long time. 90 minutes is more than enough time. People should be done with this within 30 minutes. So I give you three times more amount of time you need to take the exam. Uh, so Proctorio will not be used. Okay, question one. Based on the relationship between the components existing in the time series and the preferred forecasting technique, for example, one where I'll say, uh, I'll ask a question where the knowledge is needed where a random component only indicates moving average or exponential smoothing. Random and trend components indicate regression technique. Random and seasonal components indicate a seasonal index technique. So, so this first question is, is combining the techniques with it, whatever the component assumptions are. Uh, good point, Sarah. Will these questions require us to use Excel during the exam? No. All you would need is a calculator, just a calculator like this. Here's my T, little TI-30. That's all you need, because there's probably three or four places you add numbers, you divide numbers, and that's all. So Excel is not needed. Again, it's not trying to figure things out. I reserve figuring things out and discovering things and learning things I reserve that for the homework and the memos. For the exam, it's just evaluation, that you know what the answers are. Question two, based on, um, based on the mechanics in the relationship, the seasonal forecast equals the seasonally adjusted forecast times the seasonal index, have that in front of you. In other words, uh, there's two numbers there. I will give you, I mean, there are three numbers there. <laughs> I will give you two and ask for the third. And it'll be a combination of two to three. The combination of what I ask, uh, what I give you and what I ask. Question three, 
this is based on the mechanics of moving average with a window identified. For example, in the time series 2468 for years 1 to 3, 4, respectively, the forecast for year 5 using a moving average with a window of 2 is, and it's 6 plus 8 divided by 2, which is 7. And for the forecast uh, for year 5 using a moving average with, with a window of 3 is 4 plus 6 plus 8 divided by 3, which is 6. That's, that's all I'll be doing. So, so you see, you will need some calculations. Again, just a calculator is all you'd need, or you might be able to do it in your head. 6, six plus 8 there is... Uh, what is that? 14 divided by 2 is 7. Here's 18 divided by 3 is 6. You, you could do it in your head. But usually calculators to be safe, right? Question 4. Uh, this question is based on a two-year quarterly time series with only seasonal random components, and it's given there. And this is exactly what you will see on the exam, except different numbers. I give you the sum over here. I give you the sum down here. It's this, just different numbers is all I'll be doing. Now, possible questions simply are the seasonal forecast for quarter one is, the seasonally adjusted forecast for quarter three is. Okay? So the seasonal forecast and seasonal adjusted forecast. And so you have, and here's how you do it the seasonal forecast for quarter one is six divided by two. And this is 40 divided by eight. And so I'm just showing you there. I'll ask you one of those two questions. Okay, so there's forecasting. Okay, are there, how are the answers submitted? Just like the homework. It's just like the homework. You're given the answers, except uh, the different answers will have the answers there. For example, like, um, let's come up here, like this one right here. I'll say, what is the forecast using, uh, for in the time series this, what's the forecast for year five? And it'll have 5, 6, 7, and 8. Well, for an MA2, it's 7. For MA3, it's 6. So it'll just be 5, 6, 7, 8, and you pick the right answer. So it'll be uh, it'll be just like the homework, except the answers will not be A, B, C, D, or 1, 2, 3, 4. It'll be the actual answers. Okay? Um, will there be a way to show our work? No, because you won't need to show your work. Uh, the work is just will be something like that. And uh, there's no need. Only the answers. And you'll see here, like here, dividing six by, divide, adding two numbers divided by two. Here, taking that number divided by, by eight. So it's really straightforward. Can you please explain question one again? Oh, yeah. Up here, it's, it's based on the relationship between the components and the technique. In other words, random component only, then the technique of preference is moving average exponential smoothing. A random and trend components indicates regression technique. Random and seasonal components indicate the seasonal index technique. It's just the components and the technique. In other words, if you have random and trend, you wouldn't use a moving average. That would be the wrong technique, right? Okay, that's all that one is. Uh, no, you won't. Uh, you um, will be able to download the exam document today. No, you cannot. Uh, there is no exam document. You have to take it online. Okay, at the very beginning up here, the exam is online. In other words, you with well, the homework, you download the questions, then upload the answers. No, this one is you take the exam. It's an online exam. So you take the, uh, the exam will be online. So you go in there, you read the question, and then you answer it. Read the question, answer it. Okay. So is this like which statement is true? Yeah. Yeah, I give true and false statements, and you pick the one that's true. And I don't I do not do like how many are true. I don't do that. The examiner says, what is the answer? Okay, like like what is the seasonally adjusted forecast for quarter one? And your answer, A, B, the answers would be three, four, five, and six. 
Well, four, five, and six are wrong. Three is right. So you pick the right answer. Okay. Okay, let's go on. Uh, uh, linear programming. So here's what I'm doing in linear programming. Uh, based on the type of LP problem defined. For example, a product mix it would be like producing a product not to exceed capacity resources and maximize profit. An ingredient mix is purchasing ingredients to meet requirements and minimizing cost. Transportation is determining shipping schedule from resources to destinations that minimize cost. In other words, on this question, I'll be describing a problem and say, what type of problem, what type of linear programming problem is this? So before you solve it, you have to know what kind of problem it is. And so I'll describe it and then say, which problem is it? Boy, I got some more chat here. A lot, a lot of chat. Let's do some more. Uh, statement is true. It like identifying technique that is applicable for a given data. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Not sure I understand what does it mean that no internet is allowed. Okay, I mentioned that at the beginning. Uh, you can't get on the internet and Google this uh, or ask, uh, have someone take the exam with you with the internet. Uh, get on the internet and uh, uh, have a chat room or uh, you can't use the internet to get the answers. Get the answers from the material. That's what I mean by that. I feel like none of the above threw me off a lot on the homework and quizzes. Will this be an option on the exam? On some, on some questions, I do have none of the above. And the reason I do that is to make sure you know uh, what the answers are. In other words, to make sure, says, I know it's, I know it's, I know it's not none of the above, I got the answer. And sometimes I don't do none of the above. It has to be one of these, pick one of them. Okay. And the reason for none of the above is sometimes people will use the wrong technique. Uh, and sometimes qualitative, there's no reason for none of the above. It is one of the an answers. But quantitative, if you do the wrong technique, you get an answer that's not there. Then none of the above. As a matter of fact, um, so that that's a, a actually a, when you have none of the above answer, it's a very good question. It's a very good answer because that will force people to think, I am sure I know this is right. And so it tests your confidence as much as your knowledge and skill. Know what you know and, uh, and don't deviate from it and don't second guess yourself. Okay, question two. Uh, the question two is based on the dis definitions and mechanics related to the objective function. For example, oh, by the way, I'll give you a problem just like this with different numbers. And I'll say, in the product mix LP, for A equals one and B equals two, the profit is what? What is a profit? Well, one times two plus two times three is six. Six and two is eight. It's eight dollars. So this is just looking at the objective function. Question three is uh, based on the definition of mechanics related to slack of a constraint. Uh, for example, in the product mix problem, again, a product mix problem, for A equals one, B equals two again, uh, Resource Z has the greatest slack. I'll say, which resource has the greatest slack? Okay, well, for X here, it's 1, uh, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13, the slack is 0. Two, now remember, B is 2 and A is 1. So 10 plus 2 is 12, the slack is 1. Here's a, uh, 8 plus 3 is 11, the flat slack is 2. So Z has the greatest slack. So it would be on the constraints. And number four, based on the definitions of mechanics related to the binding and non-binding constraints. Okay, and here, for example, in the product mix for A equals one, B equals two, uh, resource X is binding, resource Y is non-binding, and resource Z is non-binding. Now, in this question, I could ask, I didn't put it in here, but I could say, uh, resource X, is resource X binding, or which resource is binding? Uh, X, Y, or Z. Or I could say which resource is um, a, a binding constraint, which means the slack is zero. So uh, I'll be, that's what I'll be asking on this one. And so you have to actually, remember the binding constraint is when the slack is zero. Well, I say X is binding. So two, two times six is 12 plus one is 13. That equals 13, so that's binding. 
So that's just definitions to recognize what these problems are, to know they're using up all those resources. While answering the exam, can I have this as a cheat sheet on different screens? Yes, that's why I'm giving it to you. Yeah, I'm hoping you do. <laughs> Use all the resources you have. It's open book, open notes, and this is part of the material. That's why I'm giving it to you. So you don't just try to memorize it. You have it in front of you. That's what I mean. If you're prepared, have everything in front of you, print this thing off. If you have it all in front of you, you should be able to answer these questions pretty quickly. You're not going to need 90 minutes if you're prepared. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine too. A different browser screen. Yeah, you can if you have two screens, that's fine too. You just can't go exterior. Just use the material from the course. That's all. I, that's all I I care about. Uh, that's all that's necessary. Okay. Topic three is aggregate planning. Four questions, approximately four questions. Now, question one is based on this graph. If you remember this graph, uh, where you have the total ordering cost right here. Total carrying cost, inventory cost. And the questions are based on the three possible relationships. If Q is greater than EOQ, then the carrying cost is greater than the ordering cost. If Q is less than EOQ, then the ordering cost is greater than the carrying cost. Okay, for example, I'll say the ordering is greater than carrying cost for the inventory policy 3, 6, and EOQ is 7. So essentially what I'll be giving you is I'll say here's an inventory policy, here's EOQ, and I say which one of these is true. That's what I'll give you. So get used to this relationship. So question one will be exactly that. I'll word it differently. But it'll be that, that, that type of question. Okay, question two. Based on the relationship in the equations, ROP for uh, constant demand and ROP for stochastic demand, especially related to cause and effect changes in the safety stock. Now, this question I will ask different ways. Uh, for example, I'll say uh, for, for constant demand, if the safety stock increases, then does ROP increase? Yes or no? Or something like that. And over here, if uh, the lead time increases, then ROP increases. You know, if uh, if uh, the variance decreases, then ROP decreases. That type of thing. That's what I mean by cause and effect relationships. So if something changes, then what's the cause and effect in another variable? Okay. So on question two, that's what this is about. And now question three is based on the knowledge of the conditions that indicate the application of the base stock level inventory policy. For example, the continuous versus periodic reviews and constant versus stochastic demand, etc. In other words, on this question, I will describe something. I say, which one of these requires the base stock level? You know, you say, oh, we have continuous review policy. That's not a base stock level. It has to be periodic. Well, this is constant demand. That's not base stock level. It has to be stochastic. So that's the kind of question this is. Understanding when a base stock level is being used. It's stochastic demand with periodic review system. That's when it's used. So that's what I want you to remember. Okay, question four. This is based on the relationships in, the, in these equations here. Uh, again, the lot sizes especially related to the cause and effect in the inventory policy. So notice in question two, I will take different variables and say cause and effect in the safety stock, okay? But down here, instead of safety stock, I will say what type of relationship is there changes in the inventory policy. So it's the same type of question, but what it is, is looking at, um, uh, well here, up here, it's the safety stock, and here, it's the inventory policy. Okay, so it's it's the cause and effect between the relationships 
and the and the inventory plus the ROPQ. Okay. And so I say, when this increases, what happens here? When this decreases, what happens over here? So just know the relationships uh, between the variables. Okay, and to me, that's a fairly basic uh, level of understanding uh, from this course. That's important. Okay, uh, topic four, inventory. Okay, the first question here is based on the relationships between the pure strategies of level chase and uh, variability in the demand and control over inventory labor. For example, the inventory is independent of demand variability for a pure chase strategy. The labor is independent of demand variability for a pure level strategy. The most control over inventory is for a pure chase strategy. The most control over labor is for a pure level strategy. In other words, I will, I will change the wording around, but this knowledge is necessary for this question. And I'll say, oh, I'll ask it different ways. I could ask it all different ways. But this knowledge is necessary to answer question one uh, within the, uh, in, uh, within the ag uh, inventory part. Wait a minute. This is inventory. I got him backwards. <laughs> I got him backwards. This is inventory. This is all inventory. And this is aggregate planning. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, this is all aggregate planning. I got the titles different. I'll switch them around. I'll, I'll pull this down and I'll, I'll make it right. I'll switch it around. At least I found out. Uh, did anyone notice that? This up here was not aggregate planning. It was inventory. This is inventory, inventory, inventory. And this is aggregate planning down here. How about that? I found my own mistake. Okay. Okay, question two. On this one, is based on the relationship of production, production standard, and the FTE requirements. Specifically, the equation, the number of FTEs equals the production divided by the production standard, where the production standard is given. So I will give you the production standard, okay? And for example, how many FTEs are required if I give you the production and production standard? If you're producing 100 items, your production standard is 10, then you need 10 FTEs. So that's all this is. It's just recognizing the question. Uh, I, I'll give you the production standard and recognizing how to put the numbers together to know how many FTEs you need. So this is more of a capacity question. What's my capacity? I need these FTEs, this type of thing. Question three, based on the recognition of the type of aggregate planning strategy, from the quarterly demand and quarterly production for a year. For example, here are three sample questions. Uh, the quarterly production 5555 and the quarterly demand 4682 represent a level strategy. So what does a level, level, level strategy occur? Right over here, 5555. The quarterly production 5793 and the quarterly demand 4682 represents a chase demand. Well, notice this 5793 is one above each one of these. 4 to 5, 6 to 7, 8 to 9, and 2 to 3. So these, you add 1 to each one of these, and you have, well, the pattern is the same. It's not exactly the same, but it's the pattern is the same. So this represents a chase demand strategy. But since it's one more, it's a chase demand strategy with, an inventory objective, okay, but it's still chased. It chill, it's still a, a chase strategy. And the quarterly production of five seven nine three, and this demand uh, represents. I did it again. I meant to do it the other way. I'm gonna go the other way. Three, five, seven, one. I want to go the other way. 
that's a chase demand too. I did I did above, above, below, this kind of thing. So recognize the patterns is what we're looking for. Notice the uh, the last two chase product two chase production plans will include an inventory objective. There we go. By the way, I, I have all this right in the exam. I just made this up, made the exam that I made this up. So I'm correcting it here as we go. Yep. I meant to have one one above uh, uh, an inventory objective of increasing your inventory. And this is an inventory objective of decreasing your inventory. That's kind of what I meant to do. Okay, let's see here. Can you give an example on how the question will be? Well, for example, this. You could say, uh, the quarterly production this and the quarterly demand here represents which type of strategy? Level chase mixed. Something like that. Or I could say a chase strategy is represented by which for the demand for this demand, a chase strategy is represented with which production plan? And I'll have five 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 and I'll have that. So so um, if you understand this, then, then the question began. Good point here. The the uh, the um, taking an exam is one. Reading the question very carefully to understand the question. Two, reading the answers to understand what the answers are, and then putting them together. That's the key. That's the key in taking an exam. Some more chat. Uh, can you explain how you know which strategy is based on the numbers? Well, first of all, the level, these are going to be level. Okay. Uh, then chase, these are going to have the same pattern as these. And notice five is one more than four, but then seven is one more than six, and nine is one more than eight, and, and three is one more than two. Now three, five, seven, and one is one less than each one of these. So the patterns are the same. And that's what chase demand strategy means. Uh, the production chases the demand. Okay, it mirrors it. Okay, question four. Uh, this is this question is based on the recognition of the quarterly production standard from the quarterly demand and quarterly production for a year. Specific specifically, determining the. Um, Production standard equals the production divided by the number number of FTEs. For example, find the production standard given the production level and the number of FTEs. In other words, I'll be giving you the production. I give you the FTEs. I say, what's your production standard? So on this one, I, I'm asking for a production standard. Look for the production, and I'll say, okay, well we had five FP, I, we had five FTEs in this in this month in this quarter. Uh, we produced uh, uh, 10 items. What's the production standard? Well, 10 over 5 is 2. Okay, 10 over 2 is 5, whatever my numbers were. So that's what this one is going to be about. Is that I give you those two numbers, you just recognize them, recognize the question, identify the numbers, and then and then do one division. Okay. So that's that that question is about. So and I think this is all I think this is all of them. Yeah. So uh, that is where um, that's basically the types of questions I'll be asking on the exam. Uh, let's see here. In level all the values are equal. Yep, they sure are. Like this. Yep, all the values are equal. Hope we don't have questions where we will have to convert the time conventions like yearly, monthly, weekly. 
Well, uh, I'd like to answer that. I'd like to answer that by pointing out that here I've given you all 16 questions and nowhere in these questions do I require, um, I don't think, that I require any conversions. I don't think so. That's for the homework. That's for learning and seeing how to apply this. This is just for evaluation. I don't think anywhere, did I do that anywhere? Where did I do it? I didn't do it anywhere. I didn't see it anywhere. We had that part in our homework. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, but again, the homework is designed for learning. Exams are designed for evaluation. They're not the same. They're not the same. These are the questions I'll be asking. Just evaluate. Do you know what the question means? Do you know where to find the answer? And put them together. So I, I my philosophy on exams is not the same as homework. Because those homework can, can be, I try to make them at the right level for the time we had, but they can be very challenging. And I've taught different places where they are very challenging. And, uh, and some, some, some answers don't have closed close, uh, close form. So you have to have upper and lower limits and then, and then estimate. But in here, the homework is different than the exams. And uh, I guess what I was also up here, to emphasize that more is that um, online examination designed for evaluation. I said at the beginning, and I just really want to emphasize that. I really want to emphasize that to make sure you understand that it's for evaluation. And so this exam design will, um, here's how you prepare for it. So I want everyone to do well. And so I've, I've given you an outline on how to prepare for the exam. And I've given you a good idea of what the questions are going to be. In some cases, I'll tell you what the, exact, what the questions actually are with different numbers. Okay. And so um, in some cases, I'll change the wording around. But I give you the topic. I give you the subject matter and come in prepared. Okay. Does that help? Let's see, what else? Before we before we move, I'm going to move away from exam and go to projects here in just a second. Any questions about exams? A little bit more on exams. Best resource for studying for the exam, the classes, the website videos, or the Word files? Well, each person, Omar, every person has their own um, strategy, own learning style. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I would strongly recommend that you would use this as a basis to study because this is what the questions are going to be. Does that make sense? In other words, you can read the videos, you can read the book, you can read a bunch of books, but this is what I'm going to be asking. And this is the part of the material that you need for this particular exam. Uh, I would recommend that. Will we know the score of the exam right away once we submit? No, you won't. Uh, I'll, I won't do that. Uh, I will uh, post the exam. I said that up here too. Uh, answer to the exam will be posted online. Exam grades will be posted on Canvas. Uh, but I'll do that only after it's done. In other words, uh, after uh, May 15th, then you'll have, on, on May 16th, you'll have your exam grades. I'll open that up. Okay, and then the course grades will be, will be reported to the, to the registrar. So I said that at the beginning here. So uh, uh, the answers uh, will not be posted on Canvas. Well, will be posted on Canvas, but I won't open them up until after everyone's taken the exam. Okay, and by the way, also, this is being recorded, 
And this is going to be posted on Canvas. You can look through this again and again and again. Wait just a little bit more. Any more questions on the exam? Is everyone comfortable with uh, how to move forward and, and how to study and how to prepare and, and, and how to be ready for the exam? Uh, and notice you can take it any time between now and May 15th, but make sure you get it done before May 15th deadline uh, because once it's over, it's over, you get a zero. Because I post people's answers. Because actually, uh, about posting answers, I can't really post the answers. Because if I post the answers, you have all the, someone takes it tomorrow, or what is today, this 27th? Someone take it on the 28th or 29th, post the answers, and you have all the questions and all the answers. That, that kind of defeats the purpose of, of an exam. Which link do we have to open to start the exam? It's in Canvas. We're still using Canvas. Take exam here, right there. It's not live yet. It'll be live the next day or two. Submit project here. It's not live yet. It'll be live the next day or two. And this is what we just looked at. We're getting ready to look at the project instructions next. You're welcome, Sri Devi. The biggest thank you is doing well on the exam. <laughs> I hope you do well. Okay, let's go to the project. And as I, as I just showed you on the, uh, as I just showed you here, this was the exam study guide that I just went over. Now let's go over the project instructions. Download this and look at the instructions. Uh, and I probably will just combine. I'll change this around. I combine these two to where there's just one video. The first half will be the exam. The second half is the project instructions. So I'll go through the instructions uh, uh, right now. But also um, notice we still have, uh, if we bring up the syllabus, I didn't open up the syllabus. If we bring up the syllabus, here it is. Notice we're going to have a week, uh, two more weeks. I will come here. Uh, I'll be here Tuesday and Tuesday, but there's no really, all the review is today. And I'll come here uh, next Tuesday. Uh, I'll do a live stream the next two weeks. Uh, there is no material though. I, I could cancel class. Uh, and if it was on campus, I would cancel it because there's no reason to be here. But I'll show up and see if anybody have, has any questions for 5, 10, 15 minutes. If no one shows up, that's fine. That means everyone is doing well, and that's what I want to see. I want to see everyone doing well. Okay, so let's um, let's go on to the um, project instructions. Project instructions here, or guidelines, whatever you call them. Okay, so let's open that up. Here they come. And all I did was copy this from the syllabus, but I will, I will explain it and show you what I mean by these things. Each student is required to conduct independent research on a topic based on material related to this course. Now, what I mean by independent research, uh, usually independent research means you do it all by yourself. Not necessarily. It means you do research on something you're interested in. That doesn't mean you do it in a vacuum. Uh, you can work in groups. You can do all kinds of things. You can work with teams. Uh, you can work with other people, even outside the course, but just do research. What I mean by independent research is that you, once you get that research and you get information, then you pick and choose what you put into the report. And there's where the independence comes. Uh, yes, I'll have normal right here. Uh, yes, I'll have normal office hours also this week and ne next two weeks until the end. Thurs no, well, Thursday and Friday, because I have class now on uh, on the other times. Uh, I have uh, office hours Thursday and Friday at 7 for the rest of the semester. Okay, that's for me by independent research. Uh, and then uh, the deliverables 
from each student are an individual report and a video presentation. It's two things. Each student must have a different project. Okay, this different project doesn't mean dependent research. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, two people turn in the same research. You can research the same area, but each person must have a different project, a different perspective. And when you start doing research, uh, there really, re really is no one way to analyze things. There's multiple ways of looking at it. Take any topic and you'll look, look, you can look at it different ways. Uh, the project grade for each student will be 10% on the video presentation, 90% on the individual report. Each student may elect to perform the entire project alone or be part of a small project team. If a project team is used, the team may select a topic based on material related to this course, and each student will conduct research on an aspect of the topic. Now, you can work together, but each person does a different aspect, and therefore, uh, it's independent of one another. Although the team will research the same topic, each student must conduct research on an individual aspect of the topic. That's what I was referring to above. Topics can be selected from a list I have, that I will provide on the website mdharper.com. So let's go there right now. If we bring up the syllabus, the home page, I mean not the syllabus, on the canvas, the home page down here, and down here we have uh, this, the, um, uh, the website, mdharper.com, uh, Operations Management, now, if you come down to the bottom where all these videos are that hopefully you've looked at, Project List A. I have two different project lists. The first one, and these are just suggestions. Uh, you can do something other than this, but these are just, uh, just suggestions. If we are in a two-person team on a four-aspect topic, is it two aspects per person? Just want to be sure. No, no. You just do one. Uh, I bet you can take any topic and you can have a lot more than four aspects. <laughs> you can have a dozen aspects on a topic. I mean, you can, you can look at the topic. You can look at the, 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 the analytical part. You can look at the theoretical part the applied part, uh, the quasi part, the pseudo part, the political part, the psychological part. I mean, you could just go on and on and go crazy. And that's why education is so much fun, because you can just go crazy. Crazy fun. Okay. Uh, well, here's some suggestions. And you don't have to pick these, but these are suggestions. Project one is forecasting. And like I have four here, but these are only four chapters out of this book, and there's like you know, at least eight chapters. Uh, <laughs> right, Craig, right. Uh, um, the, um, this book here, uh, now this book I selected here, this is a pretty, uh, pretty broad book. It's not too technical. It knows its principles and practice. And so there are some just just talking about things, not necessarily looking at the quantitative parts, more of the general parts, okay? And that's that's this particular uh, book. Uh, and this talks about judgment, for example, judgment forecasting, uh, REMA models. We mentioned the REMA models, nonlinear uh, trends and graphical techniques. And these are four. There's probably more there, too. Uh, the um, Or business process management. Now, process engineering, we talked a little bit about process and scheduling. And I think, uh, yeah, quiz eight is due this, this uh, that's queuing system, queuing theory, flow, uh, that type of thing. That's process management uh, on, on, on different flow, flow and, uh, and the Little's Law and this kind of thing. Uh, well, this book here is a good overview. I think it's Harmon. Yeah, this is Harmon's book. And Harmon's book is just is a really good a good broad treatment of process management. He talks he talks about business process change, but basically it's process management. And uh, some of the process textbooks are very technical, and so you can get pretty mathematical. And, and uh, if people are interested in it, 
you can look for those kinds of uh, resources too. Uh, and actually, my background is very tactical, and so I like doing that. Uh, but also, a lot of experience in business, I like the more qualitative too. So I pretty much like everything, and so do what you like. And we'll talk about that when we get back to the uh, instructions. Do what suits you. That's what this is about. Now, under the process management, we have the enterprise level, the process level, implementation level. There are the three different levels. Within each level, and notice, and say the enterprise level, this is chapters two through seven. Each chapter has a different aspect or different perspective. Likewise for the process level and then the detailed implement, imp, implementation level. Analytics. Uh, now we come to analytics here. Now in this book here, uh, he, this analytics by uh, Anderson is a well-known author and he's, and so is Fry, but Cochran, Fry, uh, Ullman, and, uh, and Anderson, uh, these are well-known, uh, well, these are authors that have done other things too. But this is a good overview of analytics, and I think it's a good start, uh, more of a business overview. And here we have descriptive analytics, predictive, prescriptive, de decision analytics. Here's four, uh, and there's within each one of these are different aspects. Okay, um, so, uh, so here's four, and uh, probably within each of these chapters, you can have more than one. All right, let's see, 12, 14, 15, like up here, 7, 8, 14, 15. Uh, let's see here. So like right here, chapter 4. What about chapter 5? Here's 5. What about 6 and 7? What about 3? What about 9 and 10? Well, you can pick anything you want. These are just suggestions. Okay? Uh, and some people always say, what well, do you have suggestions? Yeah, here's some suggestions. Business sustainability. Ah, some people really uh, have a, a lot of interest and a passion sometimes for sustainability which is excellent because sustainability, this is environmental, the triple bottom line sustainability. I talk about that in, uh, in supply chain management uh, and a little bit in project management, but mostly in supply chain management. Uh, sustainability, as far as the, the triple bottom line is concerned, uh, this is going to grow. It's going to be necessary. And as analytics have grown, sustainability will grow. And so if you, uh, this is a good resource book too, if we look at this book, Maintaining so, uh, Sustainability Work, Best Practices in, may, in Managing and Measuring Corporate, Social, Environmental, and Economic Impacts. So they do all three. Okay, and uh, so here's a, a book which gives a good overview. Okay, Measuring It, Improving It, Reporting It. Quality Management. There's a lot of books out there on quality. This is a good introductory book on key concepts. And notice case studies. Uh, we'll talk about case studies here in just a second. Uh, project management, I teach I teach uh, out of Waisaki's book. This is not the book I teach out of by Waisaki. Well, this is the book I teach out of, actually. Uh, there are a lot of project management books. This is a good managerial book. And it's enterprise level down to the detailed level. A very, very practical book. I teach out of this book. This is one of, one of my favorite uh, texts in project management. And then supply chain management. Okay, now this is what I don't teach out of. Uh, Harmon is more of a, a, a survey book. I teach uh, out of a different textbook by Simke Levy. Uh, but uh, again, you might want to go into supply chain management. And if you do, uh, key concepts, metrics, innovations, creating, so much you can do. And then there's a B list. Some people always pick professional organizations. Uh, you want to be certified in APEX in, let's say, resource management or inventory control. Do you want to be uh, certified in uh, get a service in uh, sales and operations planning, or forecasting, or or quality control, uh, or something else? Now, usually I have only allow only one person. Uh, in other words, if if someone is person A over here is doing uh, the certification with the Institute Institute of Business Forecasting, that's what IBF is. Someone wants to do certification in IBF. Okay, well, no one else can because someone is doing it. But this is online. And so no one is really going to see this or no one's going to know what you're doing. So as far as I'm concerned, if two people are very interested in getting certified in forecasting, then fine. Go ahead and both of you do it. That's fine. But, because, but don't do it together. Do your own report. 
And sometimes, not sometimes, always, when that happens, they're different because people see it different ways. Uh, now, that certification, a lot of people do certification. Uh, get a lot of chats. Let's, let's look at some of these chats. Is there a requirement on how long the report must be? I'm getting to that. I'm getting that after this. At least two pages, but succinct but adequate. Correct. If I pick forecasting, do I have to do all the four parts under it? No, you pick what you're interested in and go as deep as you want. Can you you can do all of them or no, or just one of them or half of one? It's up to you. You're you're the one choosing that. I do not want to. A very good point, Simba. This is a good point. I want to emphasize. I do not want to pick your project. I want you to pick your project, but it has to be in this area. There are guidelines. There are constraints. But within that, you choose what you want to do, and you write it the way you want to write it. This is something for you to do. I should probably emph emphasize that more at the beginning. I don't want you to do this for me, uh, although I'll be grading it. But I want you to do it for yourself. And if, if I see that you find something interesting and you go into it in depth and it's related to this area, I'm fine with that. And so you go as detailed as you want, as deep as you want, as broad as you want. But this is for you. It's not necessarily for me. Here's your chance to take this beyond uh, the classroom. Uh, can you please show a sample report? No, because then you will, you will copy it. Then it won't be yours. It'll be that report. I want you to write it yourself. Uh, and now another, another, another aspect of that too. I have learned that when I do something, I, th I think this is good. I do it, and then uh, I think about it. I go, you know, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. Uh, well, that is priceless learning. And so sometimes, when you start thinking of how you can do it better. That that is so much better learning than someone telling you what to do. In other words, you're learning it yourself. So I'm hoping you just do this yourself. Uh, if we choose to work alone, can we just select one of the topics within the project topic? Yes, you can. Uh, can we do a chapter in the book that's not listed? Uh, absolutely, yes. Something that I have not done. Uh, and I, I have guidelines on that down here, down later too. I don't want you to redo what I've done in this course. But there are things I haven't covered. You can certainly do that. Good point, Dana. Good point. How many minutes should the video be? It should be you're reporting. You're not teaching. Again, around two to three minutes is all you need. It shouldn't be more than that. Uh, so is this somewhat like a book report digging into a specific section of one of these books? It could, but I would prefer not. If you want to do that, you can say, this book said this, this, this. That's not what I want. I want I want this to be independent research. From this book, I learned this, 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 and this. And that could be the foundation, but you might learn from other places as well. A book report is saying what they said. Independent research is what you've learned from that book and other places. Okay, it's something that you have learned from, from your research. Uh, or can we do online research on a topic related instead of using one of these books? Absolutely. Again, these are just suggestions. Uh, book report is definitely the impression I'm getting. I'm getting too. No, it's not a book report. I'm saying this will guide you on how to do different things if you want to. A book report would be a book report. Let's go back to forecasting. A book report would be covering all the chapters in this book. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4, Chapter 5, Chapter 6, Chapter 7, Chapter 8, Chapter 9, Chapter 10, 11, 12. It's covering, a book report is saying this is exactly what the book says. And you don't really have to say, go into the detail of what it says. You can say, oh, this one is advanced forecasting methods. They talked about neural networks and bootstrapping and vector auto, reg auto, uh, uh, auto regressions or autocorrelations and complex seasonality. Uh, and then the practical forecasting here, we get into more of the pre predictive and prescriptive analysis, backcasting, etc. That's not research. That's saying what the book said. 
There's no research there. So doing research saying neural network models. You go into what neural network models are and say neural networks are this and this and this. And here's an application. Here's this. Here's, here's a node. Here's a two-layer node. Here's a three-layer node. And here's the mathematics behind it. And here's, see, that's research. That's not a book report. That's analyze the autoregressions and showing how autoregressions will, if, you're, if you have a, a background in, in time series analysis and mathematics and, uh, and engineering, then you go into it perfectly fine. Okay? That's research. That's not a book report. Okay? A book report is not, a book report is saying, uh, is saying this chapter talked about neural networks. Uh, that is not a research report. Okay, that, is that clear? Where'd my chat room go? There it is. So I hope that's clear. Research paper more than book report, I think, Dana. You're right, Craig. The project that I am working on with more than two pages, is that okay? Yes, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, if the more than two pages is important information, uh, don't put everything down you know. Put only down what is necessary to communicate what you have found and what you've learned. So succinct means only what needs to be said. Don't say things that do not need to be said. Do we need citations? Uh, I think I'll get to that later when I get back when I get back to it. It's like I read a topic and give a report on what I've learned and what I feel is good versus bad. Uh, it's possible. Uh, do research on something. No, do research. This is what it says. This is this is what. Uh, um, for example, for example, let's back up. Oh, let's do, let's do, whoop, let's come down to Project B. For example, professional organizations, whoop, suppose you chose to do, I want to do a certification, I want to go to, a, to a, an organization, uh, take their courses, take their exam, and get a certification in forecasting, business forecasting. Okay, what would a research uh, topic be? Well, here's the uh, here's the IBF organization, society. I think it's a society, or maybe it's an institute. Institute, of, yeah, Institute of Business Forecasting. It's an institute. Uh, here's where it's located. Uh, here's what they do. Here are the exams you take. Here's the preparation you have, and here's the actual forecasting you have. And you take this exam, and here's how many people have it. Here's how long it's been there, and you tell about that that uh, uh, certification. And here's how much it costs. Here's how long people uh, have done it. Uh, here's the people who've had it. Here's some uh, what people have said about it. Uh, to me, you're doing research. Okay? It's kind of like when you watch the news and people, you have research reporters uh, researching things out and say, here's what I've learned about it. Okay? But you're going in depth and detail and showing exactly what it is and exactly what is happening with it. Okay? Uh, and so that's 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 pretty much what I mean by that. Let's see, what was I asking here? Like reading a topic, and give a report on what I have learned, and what I feel is is good versus bad. Well, it's it is learning a topic, uh, and you learn something, and you learn something about something. It's research. It's doing research. Research means you've learned something you haven't learned before. You're broadening your knowledge. Okay. Uh, the style doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm confused on the context audience to write to. I started reading the Hugo Supply Chain book. They don't have a lot of background to help me frame this. Uh, what? They still have research reporters? 
Yeah, they're called, they're called uh, uh, documentaries on TV. Short and long documentaries. National Geographic or research reporters. They do documentaries on, on things. They learn a lot about the things and report about it. Uh, and so uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of documentaries. They're very interesting stuff. And not only that, research articles, you can have documentaries and research articles. Okay, let's see here. Dana is confused. I on the context audience to write to. Uh, yeah, uh, you're writing. Th this is a. You're focusing on what you know and what you understand in your audience since essentially is yourself telling an interested viewer. There's no specific audience. It's like, oh, these people, these people, these people are saying, I am telling someone's interested in what I'm learning. In other words, like, like I, you watch a National Geographic about the ocean. Well, who's their audience? It's anyone who's interested in learning about the ocean. <laughs> okay. And so your audience is whoever you're interested in learning about, telling what you've learned. And if they're interested in what you've learned, that's, that's, your, that's your format. Great, Craig. That's great. Actually, Craig, you can go into uh, uh, Q and A, and people can ask Craig questions. And and from his uh, bachelor's was heavy in research. That's excellent. That's excellent. And uh, Q and A, you might help people uh, from that point of view. Um. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I see. I think you're mixing reporter from a news anchor. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, let's I, I won't I won't go on with the rest of these things, executive and all this stuff. Let's go back to the um, let's go back to the instructions. The originally composed individual report shall demonstrate the student's knowledge of the research and ability to effect, effectively communicate the knowledge appropriate to a business professional. In other words, it's more of a business it's it's not like uh, uh, on TV or something. It's more of a business professional. Here's what I've learned: each individual report must be unique, which means you write it yourself. The length of the report should be more than two pages and follow the guideline of succinct but adequate. And I think Sri Devi, I think was it Sri Devi or someone? No, no, no. Again, to you, they say, oh, okay, uh, it's more than two pages. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, but it should be succinct but adequate. The length must be enough to adequately present your work. Length can be considered negative if too long and content is not significant. Submit the completed individual report only through Canvas as a PDF file on or before the due date and time. Each report may be only submitted once, may only be submitted as a complete report, and must be submitted by due date and time. A report not submitted has a grade of zero. No late reports accepted. And the reason is because the day after that May 15th, May 16th, I open these up. I read them all. I see if there's anything submitted. I read everything I have. I post the grades. I submit the grades, and I'm done. I move on to, to, the, to the next uh, pointed round. Uh, each student is required to submit orig original material for their individual report. In other words, write your own report. You can have references and you can have citations uh, and you can and even graphs from someplace else. Here's what I learned. Uh, but you, you write your own report. Although collaboration is encouraged, collaboration is encouraged to conduct research and to get information. Collaboration does not include copying from another student or allowing a student to copy from you on individual work that is submitted. Don't do that. Because uh, I want everyone to write their own. I don't want, if you take someone else's work, then that's not yours. That's theirs. You put your name on it, it's plagiarism. And so don't do that. You can cite them, but then you write your own report and you present it your way. Present it your way. Okay, 
Submit your report um, through Canvas as a PDF file. Do not use a cover page. Do not use a cover page, but use the title below on the first page where the student applies information italics. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. The six lines on that first page, everyone has the same except your title is here, your name is here, and the date is here. And then the content for that page and for two or three pages more is yours. So only those six lines should be the same, and that's all. Okay, that's the project report. Uh, the project video presentations are presentations on a topic consisting of a summary of each student's research. Summary. Summary. Okay, and it's a highlights. I learned this, 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 and this. The report is actually going in depth. The video is a summary and highlights. Each person is required to present a summary of their research. Each person will be limited to approximately two minutes of presentation time. Uh, for each individual video presentation, do not read your report or cover detail in report, but present a general overview and significant findings that will be of interest to your colleagues or colleagues or business professionals or whoever might watch this or potential employers or people who are interested in engaging in some type of endeavor or entrepreneurship. They say, here's what I'm thinking. Here's the level of rigor that I'm interested in. And so the audience is, is, is you, but other people can see what your research was. Okay. And notice I say, and I want to emphasize this, do not read your report. If you read your report, then either the report is too simple or your video is too detailed. The report has the detail. Your presentation, then, is a summary, an overview. So that's the idea. Okay. Um, the individual report contains detail. The video presentation contains significant findings. Communicate content appropriate to the media, either written or presentation. And by the way, that's a really good uh, uh, guideline. Written can be detail. Presentation can be significant findings, something that's of interest because you're talking to people. Okay. Okay, let's see what we're talking about here. Can we do the project together? You seem to know all the answers. I have a dry sense of humor. Our Simba is good with, I'm good with. There's a slack conversation on that. You know, uh, MP4 f files like the memo. Exactly, Craig. Yeah, just like the memo. Uh, now, as far as, as now that I, I think I'm almost done. Yeah, I am. Uh, as far as this, let me tell you something that I do not want. It's not that I don't want it. It's just not appropriate for this course. I used to say, do anything you want. Do anything you want. Well, no, I don't say that. I say, do research in an area, do a report in the details, do a video presentation on the significant findings, and it's more of research in operations or, or something related to the field. Uh, because years ago, when I said, just anything you want. So people came in with their guitars and drums and kazoos, whatever they had, and four people sang a song about, about I think it was linear programming. Okay, that was pretty, pretty cool. I said, that's a good song, but you know, that's not what I had in mind, but I didn't say not do that. So, uh, you know, okay, fine. I had to grade on that, but then fine. Okay, well, you know, what they said was right. Their lyrics was pretty much correct. Uh, and they did go a little bit of depth in here and there about different types of uh, goal programming and things. Okay, they, yeah, there was some research in there, but it was uh, in uh, verse and lyrics and songs. Don't, don't, write a song or a poem or anything like you could but put it on your website put it on your youtube channel uh but this is more of a, a technical report and a and a significant findings of presentation 
actually it was on I did it was on YouTube uh, I don't know where it went uh, it was kind of interesting so uh, so that's 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 what I don't want you to do so I should have I should have given you that idea that's something Craig probably will do <laughs> okay so uh, Simba our Simba maybe you don't want to work with Craig he'll have you singing a song so no we we don't we don't want that anyway at least I don't you guys can in other words could this be presented in the staff room sure notice what I said it could be in a staff in a staff room in a board of directors room or it could be in uh, to uh, a colleague it could be could do it could be to a funding agency it could be to a potential employer uh, this could be to uh, maybe a uh, a partner that you want to to start a, uh, a startup with uh, maybe a venture capitalist uh, oh no 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 you know this could be it is it's a research paper and you're the audience to say here's what I know and here's what's interesting to me and they can have insight into what you know okay and here's what I've learned and here's the details that's what the presentation is and the report is the details okay so this project is an opportunity oh I didn't say it in here now that I'm done yeah I'm done I didn't say this uh, let's back up I kind of did uh, the um, the website is just suggestions you can do anything you want certifications is one thing and that's not really the area but it's in the area uh, another one is case studies sometimes it usually doesn't happen too much in operations but if anyone is in, in a company that would like to do a case study on how they did inventory management or or scheduling or something like that or optimization uh, that's perfectly fine too doing a case study with someone uh, and if you did a case study uh, usually that's what's done in supply chain or project management but it could be done in operations uh, but if you did uh, that would be fine too it would be something of interest to you and an opportunity to learn from the company you're in or the company you'd like to be in to learn how they do things because usually people will, will, are more open to give you information if you're doing a project for a university uh, project uh, than if you just want to know for yourself so uh, because the exposure is to the other students and also faculty and the university so use this as an opportunity uh, to learn as much as you can I know back when I was younger uh, these kinds of opportunities really opened the door my eyes to how broad these topics are no topic no topic I don't care what it is no topic is limited by a book you can read any book and no book can cover the topic entire in entirety you go beyond the book because there's a lot more out there to learn and so here's an opportunity to kind of to leap outside that book a little bit okay so that's what a university is about is to teach and also challenge so hopefully people will go outside go further okay I will wait a little bit and see if there's more chat and uh, so I have both the exam and the uh, and the uh, project instructions and as I say I will post these uh, in canvas down here so I'll probably combine these I'll probably put the project instructions up here and I'll combine these so that we can uh, and have the exam submitted here the project here back to back and it's due uh, by 11.59 p.m. Saturday, May 15th. Make sure you get this stuff in. The exam, you have to, it has to be taken by then. The project has to be submitted by then. See, this is take the exam. This is submit the project. Okay. Let's see here. I'm not sure if you are already specified this, but can the video format similar to the memos or is voiceover 
or does it have to be actual real of us speaking? Uh, actually, Dana, yeah, uh, it could be just like the videos. That's perfectly fine. Just like that would be good, Dana. Just like the just like the videos is perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, um, usually I would want it to be more professional. Like it could be it could be sent to a company or to a board to like a planning committee or a board or a, or an employer. Uh, but if you're more comfortable with doing something more detailed, that's fine. Or more general, that's fine. Uh, but some but make it yours. Whatever you want to do, and don't worry about. Uh, uh, is it something that I expected? What I expect is something that you want to do, and you go into it. I'm looking for the correctness, the depth, the breadth, and in this area. Not just this course redone. Something deeper than the course. Something broader than the course. Something related to the course. That this course material is in this in this course, uh, but your own. That's what I'm looking for. Can I use a real-time industry examples on the research done for the project? Absolutely, yep. You certainly can. Whoops, missed it up again. Uh, yes, you certainly can, uh, uh, Siva. That's fine. If we choose to do a case study, it doesn't make it bigger, does it? If we choose to do a case study, I work in manufacturing, could we apply one of the topic models? I guess it would be more of an analyzing paper. Uh, oh, yeah, sure, that's fine too. Well, technically, if you look at manufacturing and see what they did and do a report on it, technically that's research. And you can say, oh, here's what they did. I'm tying this back into uh, let's see, manufacturing, suppose it was scheduling or it's production control, or production design. You say, oh, here's what they did. Here's the course. You tie it back to the course. Right there, that connection with the course and what they've done is research. If you just say, oh, they did this, 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 and this, and that's, then, they, then you stop, you're not really tying it back into the course. So, oh, well, they did this, this, and this, and then, uh, and actually looking at the material, you know, they were right. You could have done this better. Could have done this differently. They could have done worse. And so tying it back to the course, that's the research part. There, there again, your knowledge of what we have learned in here applied uh, to whatever, whatever topic you pick. And the case study is fine because you're applying it. I think it's a good idea. And you're applying your knowledge to something beyond. So you're taking this course and using it as a foundation and moving beyond this either applying it or learning deeper or broader material. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, I will wait a few more minutes if there's any more chat uh, until the chat goes away. And uh, Brittany, maybe I'll get an A and a promotion. There, a couple years ago, there was a student uh, that halfway at this part of the course, she came in, she said, I've been showing my, my, uh, my boss this, my manager this, and she got a promotion to do some of this stuff in her company. This is very practical. It's not just theoretical. And so someone did get a promotion. I, I don't hear that much, but hey, they did. What I, what I hear more is they take this, they go around and they actually start a company. They, start, they have a startup or they do consulting and they move into a position to do this. So that's what I hear a lot from this course. People come back and tell me that. And that's and that was my motivation for having students do the memos and the videos. See, back then we didn't have videos. She just showed them what they did. But showing them is like a video. You'd be surprised a well done video how far it goes.
And by the way, before you ship your, your videos out, look at them again. Make sure the format is crisp and clear and it comes and it goes well. And I make so many videos that I don't, I don't have time to edit it that much. Uh, the ones on my website are edited, but these are not uh, in the canvas. My YouTube channel, that's not edited so much, but my, my website is. Good point, Brittany. Very good point. Whether you get a promotion or not, whether you get an A or not, you're smarter. You know more. And hopefully you're better now than you were 16 weeks, 14 weeks ago when you started. A lot of good practical things. A lot of good stuff. Okay, well, that's all I have for tonight. As I say, uh, let's uh, go ahead and bring my, my... I never did I never did open up my syllabus. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, let's bring back the syllabus. Uh, this is um, all I have for tonight. And like from the syllabus here, uh, uh, May 4th, May 11th, I will still, I will come again and we can have more, but actually I have nothing else to present. But I will come and people can post their, their questions in chat room. I will answer them and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, we can do all kinds of stuff and listen to, to Craig's dry humor. And who knows what's going to happen when we get together, right? Uh, but anyway, I will be here for the next two weeks uh, so that you guys can uh, ask me any questions you might have. So notice it's one, two, between now and May 15th. We have a lot of time to, to get this stuff done because I don't want you to worry over the exam. And I want you to be able to put enough time in the reports to make them yours to own them. And that's why I have so much time. I mean, I could have filled up the time. I could have expanded these, but I didn't want to. I want to focus on the end here uh, to build on what we've, on the foundation we've laid. That's all I have for today. And um, so between now and next week, when I see you again, I want to encourage everyone to be safe. Um, I want everyone to uh, uh, don't take anything for granted. Stay healthy so you can keep learning. Uh, and keep learning and keep healthy physically and mentally. And between the next time, now and the next time I see you, take care.